I remember the first time I went to a supermarket in the United States. I was so overwhelmed by all kinds of apple variety. Having no idea which one to choose, I decided to go for the one that looks good, aka Red Delicious. And soon I realized it is everything but delicious. It was an apple abomination. So why are we still producing it and blatantly lying saying it's delicious? And really, what the heck are Red Delicious apples? Well, let's find out with PAA. Hi, I'm Xiao Jielo. Welcome to What People Also Ask, where I search something seemingly obvious and share with you some of this part, aka People Also Ask, which is a feature to you what other people are searching on Google that relate to your query. Today's keyword is Red Delicious Apple. We will talk about what it is, some history about it, and why corporate America got the nerve to call it delicious. So let's start with our first part. What are Red Delicious Apples? The answer to this question is extracted from Wikipedia's Red Delicious Apple entry. According to this entry, Red Delicious is a type of apple with a red exterior and sweet taste that was first recognized in Madison County, Iowa in 1872. Today, the name Red Delicious comprised more than 50 cultivars. From 1968 to 2018, it was the most produced variety in the United States. Gala became the most produced after that. So, it's actually not one cultivar but a variety. For those who don't know, cultivar is a plant that is produced and maintained by horticulturalists but do not produce true to seed. Whereas a variety is a group of plants within a species that has one or more distinguishing characters. So as it turns out, the term Red Delicious sometimes is referring to an apple variety comprised of more than 50 cultivars. Not a single cultivar. No wonder its taste seems to be so very inconsistent. And what the heck, how can it get away with being the most produced apple up until 2018? So, why do Red Delicious apple taste so bad? And regardless of the fact that it tastes horrible, why do we still produce so many Red Delicious apples? To answer this two question, we will have to learn some history about Red Delicious and four articles to give us a very good overview. The first article titled that Red Delicious is an apple atrocity. Why are we growing billions of pounds of them each year was published by The Counter. The Counter is, according to their about page, an independent nonpartisan newsroom investigating the force shaping how and what American eats. The second article title, This is why Red Delicious Apple sucks so hard, which published by HuffPost.com. And the third article title, The Awful Ring of the Red Delicious, was published by The Atlantic. And finally, an article titled Red Delicious Apple Weren't Always Horrible, published by New England Today, which, according to their about page, is a multi-portal website designed to be the ultimate online resource for the New England region, offering original expert content on New England travel, lifestyle, food, and best event, and so much more. According to these articles, in the late 1880s, Iowa's farmer J.C. Hyatt visited his orchard and found a mysterious apple seedling. He dug it up, but it kept coming up, and he decided perhaps it deserved to leave because of its tenacity. Hyatt eventually gave up and dubbed the apple Hokai. Hyatt then submitted Hokai apple to a competition held in 1890s by Stark Brothers Nursery of Louisiana, Missouri which is a competition aimed to find successor for the Ben Davis, which was then the most frequently planted apple in America, which were sturdy and beautiful, but bland. Huh, sound like Red Delicious itself, but anyway. After one bite of Hawkeye apple, the president of Stark Brother, Clarence, said, My, this apple is delicious, he paused, and declared, That will be a damn. Stark Brothers soon purchased the right from Hyatt, and named the apple Stark Delicious. In 1914, to differentiate it from the new apple variety Golden Delicious, it was renamed Red Delicious. Okay, so what's wrong with Clarence? How could he call that abomination delicious? Did he just like blatantly lie or there was some problem with his like test bot back then? Not necessarily. As it turns out, the Red Delicious apples you can find in the supermarket might be a totally different thing than the Red Delicious apple Clarence bought into in 1893. 
According to Apple grower Mike Beck at Uncle John's Cider Mill, the original Red Delicious was pretty awesome in the sense that it was highly edible apple that appealed to many, Beck says, but it wasn't red. It was red and yellow striped. The original Hokkaid had maybe a little bit of pineapple or melon flavors. It was fruity and sweet, but it didn't look awesome. However, in 1923, a New Jersey grower discovered that one branch of his red delicious apple tree had not only ripened before others, but also turned a deep crimson red. Soon the whole industry of red delicious growers was on the lookout for the own mutation that would produce prettier and redder apples. By 1980s, Red Delicious account for 75% of the crops growing in Washington. Until 1990s, when new variety developed by American growers originally for export purpose, like Gala and Fuji, started to make their way back to the domestic market, Americans finally realized they are apples that actually taste good. The industry was caught off guard by the certain change in consumer preferences, as well as growing competition from Chinese orchards. American apple growers found themselves having surplus crop worth close to 800 million between 1997 and 2000. In 2000, a total of 138 million bailout, or roughly 30,000 per grower in Washington, was approved by the government as the largest bailout of the apple industry ever. However, this only partially reduced growers' financial problems. As a result, the industry has things focused on export. So the idea is like, okay, since the American now have realized how disgusting Red Delicious is, let's sell it to the foreigner who are still unaware of how terrible it is before they figure it out. Classic corporate America. Okay, so that is a big picture of the whole Red Delicious shenanigan. Let's also talk about some interesting details about it. So, where are Red Delicious Apples grown? This question is answered by an article titled All About Red Delicious Apples, published on Minopod Orchard's website. According to this article, cooler climate are ideal for growing Red Delicious Apples. And Washington State provides a large portion of Red Delicious Apples consumed in the United States. Red Delicious trees thrive in the sunny fall and chilly winter. That's because the apple only develops its distinctive red color under environment of sufficient sunlight, and it also requires 700 to 800 cooler hours to produce fruit. Why are Red Delicious apples cheap? The question is answered by an article titled, Red Delicious is an apple atrocity, why are we growing billions pounds of them each year, which was published by The Counter. According to this article, Red Delicious is particularly popular in markets with low average incomes due to its low cost. For a wide range of reasons, the variety typically costs less. The price has plummeted due to the weak domestic demand and the fact that they are typically grown on older trees, where the startup costs have already been paid off. Additionally, because of the Red Delicious variety was created almost a century ago, the production does not include the club fees charged to orchards growing more recent proprietary strains like Honeycrisp. Today we learned what is Red Delicious Apple, why it tastes so bad, and why we still producing it regardless, as long as some fun fact about it. If you made it to the end of the video, chances are that you enjoy learning what people also ask on Google, but let's face it, reading PAA yourself will be a pain. So here's the deal, I will do the reading for you and upload a video compiling some fun PAA once a week. All you have to do is to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you won't miss any PAA report that I compile. So just do it right now. Bye!